Hello and welcome back to the Third Eye Cyborg. This is episode 3 in our Python tutorials. Last time we went into the history of Python and variables as well as data types. So we are now going to go into conditionals, loops, and functions as well as scope. Should be a lot of fun. Let's dig in. All right, so I'm going to use a reference that I used in the last video. This is a complete beginner's guide to Python. Um, I, are, I authored this in Medium. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested. We're going to kind of continue where we left off, and this is at conditional statements. So conditional statements are a way for Python to tell if two conditions are logically met or not. So in this example, you have one, two, and three integer values being assigned to one, two, and three variables. And you just have a little bit of a condition statement here. And you can see that you have a couple of keywords. The keywords are if, elif, and else. And you also have a couple of operators. These are called comparison operators. They're in the top of the list if you're interested of this guide. Um, now there's a bunch of different types of operators. What we're dealing with is comparison operators right now. And you can see there's the double equals that tells if two values are equal. There's the equal with the explanation point which tells if two values are not equal. There's the two reverse facing less than and greater sign signs which tells if there is two values that are not equal. There is the greater sign that tells if a value is greater than another. Less than, that tells if a value is less than another, greater than or equal, or less than or equal. And that is going to be what we go over right now. Now there's also a couple of keywords that you can use within conditions like and and or. Um, and I'll go into that a little bit as well. But let's get back to where we were. So conditional statements allow you to test the conditions of variables, functions, all sorts of things. So if one is greater than two, print one is greater than two. Now since these are integers, Python already knows with this, with this comparison operator that one is not greater than two. So this condition inside of this condition block, and you know it is because it's indented within the if statement, is not going to be met. So even though there is code there, since this condition is not met, what it's telling Python to do is to skip over this now if it's not met. Now, the if statement right here is the only one that's required. The elif and the else are optional. If you do not have them there, what it will do is it will just skip over the code if, it's not, if the condition is not met and continue on with the rest of your code. If it is met, then it will, it will uh, enact the condition and then it will continue on with the rest of your code. So depending on how you wrote your code, that can do a lot of things and what is inside of the conditional statement. Now the elif just tells you if another condition is met that is different and specific as well, uh, just like the first condition. And what else says is if none of these conditions are met, then do this. So else statements are very very useful for if you want a condition to be met and if it's not net, met then do something completely different than the rest of your code you'll see a lot of that with the else statement now um, you can also throw the keyword and with a space and and then a space after it too with another complete condition so and that has how you can do one-liners with multiple conditions as well. So that's kind of uh, 
the basics of an if statement, and you'll see more of those in our projects, and you'll learn more about them. You can also nest if statements within each other. And the next thing we're going to go over is loops in Python. So the first loop we're going to go over is the for loop. The for loop allows you to iterate over a collection or a sequence. So the cool thing about for loops is it allows you to really have control of your data and what happens with your code and what happens specifically based off of different conditions within your data because you can use conditionals within for loops and for loops within conditionals, you can nest them, and it, it becomes extremely, extremely wonderful. It's just an amazing tool to have in your set to be able to use both of them together and that is where you'll find a lot of the functionality of your programming goes so at least in the beginning stages so you have a list in this example one two three four integer values in a list and you merely declare a for loop by typing in the keyword for space a variable name now this variable gets created upon the declaration of the for loop and this variable represents the iteration of the value that is currently cycling through the loop. So if you run this loop, if you run this code, it'll go through these loops before it enacts any other sort of code. So it will loop through every item in here. So it'll run this code as if this is the first item in the list, and then the second item, and then the third item, and then the fourth item, and then it will continue on with the with your list. Now you can see that with this it just prints one, two, three, four. Now it doesn't print them like a list, that's because through every iteration it prints it separately. And so it's on a new line because that is a different iteration of the list. So loops can be extremely, extremely, extremely useful. I can't emphasize enough how much I use them and how awesome they are. I just, uh, I love for loops and I think that most Python programmers would agree with me there. So you can use loop control functions to control the state of your loop, like break, continue, pass, and these all allow your loop to do different things. If you're interested more about loops, I recommend you read this whole uh, section to this article. We're kind of breezing through a lot of the content here because we're getting ready to do some bigger projects. And we just want to give you the base knowledge to get you to a point where you can do these projects and feel comfortable with yourself. A lot of the other things will come while we do the projects. We'll teach about them. But also, I think it's important to have that hands-on experience because when you're doing it yourself and there is a goal and there's motivation behind it, it's just a lot easier to learn in my experience. So it's good to learn the basics like this, but it retains a lot bit better, I think, if you're actually getting your hands dirty with it. That being said, we're going to continue. Um, you can loop through ranges. So ranges are a cool Python function that allows you to create a list and iterate through that list with out actually having a list. So you can just make a certain amount of iterations and then within that certain amount of iterations you can have an action happen every iteration. It's a very convenient thing when you're running into situations where you need something like that. Um, while loops? While loops are a little bit different. So the loop just keeps on going and if a condition is true and then when the condition becomes false it will stop going. Now while loops are very important for certain things they're not as used as the for loop but they're important to know about and that they exist. Functions and scope in Python. 
So functions take data through parameters and split that data out as results. Functions are separated into code blocks and only execute when they're called upon by the code. Functions are created with the DEF keyword. Functions are reusable. Functions can call themselves within their own code. And this is known as a recursive function if they do that. Functions within functions are referred to as nested functions. So you can see this is a very basic function. It's just saying the keyword DEF, which creates the function, which declares it, and then the name of the function, which in this case is called my function. Then you have your parentheses for your parameters of the function and your arguments. And then you have a colon. And this is kind of how you write out your different functions. And so the print statement down here is what happens within the function if it's called. So this function doesn't just run typically, now that there are functions that do, but you would have to call upon it. So to call on this function, all you do is you write my function with the parentheses. And if there's any arguments that need to be met there, you can put the parameters in. But otherwise, uh, that is how you call it. And it will do exactly what it says it will do. It'll print this out when you call it. So functions become extremely useful and make coding so much easier because you don't have to, for one, type out a bunch of code over and over again. But for two, it just kind of modulates it and makes it so that you can you can pick and choose what code you want to use, how you want to use it, and it kind of gets you into the first steps of thinking in an object oriented type way or a way that puts the different objects or the different items within your code into different categories. And I love functions and um, you're going to be using them a lot. It is a core principle of any programming language. So knowing how they work is just important. So this, in this example right here, you're defining a bit of a different function, a bit of a more complicated function. Now this is saying that you're going to define a function called my function and its arguments are variable 1 and then it has variable 2 as a default argument of 15. So default arguments just means that you don't need to assign a parameter to it it is going to auto assign to 15 unless you you override it when you call the function. So this function takes variable 1 and it takes variable 2 and it prints them out. Now how do you know what variable 1 is? Well you have to pass variable 1 into the function in order to create variable 1. So when you call the function you pass whatever you want variable 1 to be in as a parameter and you pass variable 2 if you want. Now because it has a default of 15, if you don't pass it in, it'll just automatically be 15. If you go ahead and pass it in, it will be whatever it will override to whatever you say that you want it to be. Um, that's a really really good way of getting your data to work within your functions. So if you want to pass data into your functions or something like that, it's, it's a good unique way of doing that, but it's also a good way of having a function be reusable for different purposes, um, but it's the same block of code doing the same type of functionality. It's just you're putting in different parameters and those different parameters equal different results. So. There's two types of arguments. There's keyword arguments and positional arguments. A keyword argument is defined by using the equal sign. 
and a positional argument is just placed within the parentheses with commas. Now, if you ever want to have an unlimited amount of arguments, say you just want a function that just adds a number onto an existing set of numbers, if you pass it into there, so it would just keep adding numbers up, if you keep passing it in, you can use uh, the double asterisk KWARGS keyword, which is key, stands for keyword args or keyword arguments, or you can use um, for positional keywords the asterisk with just args. And that is a good way to pass multiple or unlimited arguments within a function. So, scope. Oh, something that I kind of skipped up to is that you can also uh, use the return statement to return values from a function. And so that's kind of a basic of what functions are. They, they go incredibly more immense than that. But we're going to just skim the surface right now to where we can move along. Scope is refers to the code block that a variable is created and available in. So scope, there's different sorts of scope. There's local scope, global scope. Um, a lot of other languages have more scopes, but with Python, luckily you can create a variable into a global scope by using the global keyword. All scopes are are how are the availability of your different variables. So if I have x within a function, x is only go because it was created within this function is considered local scope and it would only be available within this function or anything within this function. So if there's if statements and, or loops or anything else within this function, x will be available too. Now as soon as you exit the function code block, x will not be available. So in this function, you would not be able to access x, this x. Now this x up here, since it was defined before any of the functions, it's considered global. And this would be before functions or classes and it is available to everything. So when this function takes x and changes it to 1, this function does not know that. And so this function will take x and it will still be the global version. So it is interesting and what what it's important for is if you are trying to debug your code or you're trying to figure out why something isn't working right, oftentimes it is the scope. So check your scopes, make sure that your variables are available to the proper functions, to the co proper code blocks, and it will help you out a lot in your code. Thank you for watching. If you liked it, remember to subscribe to my channel and throw me a thumbs up. I also write Medium articles and do Anchor podcasts, so I'll throw links in the descriptions for that. Um, I also have a Patreon and my merchandise, so if you're interested in any of that, I'll throw a link in the description. Remember to stop by my website and sign up for newsletters for any updates on any of my articles, podcasts, or videos that drop. And I'll see you guys next time. Stay tuned.